met a gypsy. I've always wondered because I mean, obviously, I wear glasses. Like, if if I'm not, if basically, if I'm not riding or doing jujitsu, I'm wearing glasses. Like, I can't see f- anything, man. And I've yeah, always yeah. see. Wondered, I wear readers. I wear readers. Like in the mornings, yeah. I'll get up, and if I'm on the phone laying in bed, I gotta, you know, I gotta have some readers on. Or if, if I go to a restaurant, the worst thing is you go to a restaurant, nice Italian restaurant, low light. Start to have a little glass of wine. Once that wine hits, I can't see shit. You know, yeah. I'm the guy with my phone out. I got the light going. You know, <laughs> taking and, a picture uh, and like zooming in on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if how much that. That's me making excuses for being slow. But I've always wondered. Like, I wish I had a well, really it's, it's good Well, it's a valid one, so you can pull that card. Yeah, you can pull the card <laughs> if you want. It's valid. Yeah, I, think, I think I might need to. Um, hey, but you know what's interesting? Thinking about eyesight, um, I never like. This never was an excuse during my career, but I look back now and you think about this thing and that thing. For me, Supercross, like my, I always Man, felt like nighttime. it was really hard to see. Yeah. Nighttime, the lights, my, my eyes used to water a lot. And even now when I ride, like even on the hottest days, I tape my goggles up all the way around my goggles because any sort of airflow makes huh. my eyes water. My eyes are kind of watering right now for some reason. But... I specifically can look back and think, wow, man, I remember that race or that race. Like if the, you know, uh, the stadium lighting was weird or or something had an issue and you correlate it to, to racers. And like, if you've ever played golf with Carmichael or uh, McGrath, like when you tee the ball off, they, they're like, oh yeah, you know, your balls, you know, way down there. Yeah. I'm like, I, I can't see shit. Those yeah. guys have excellent, excellent eyesight. And I wonder if that wasn't something that was a big advantage for them. Man, it's crazy. I don't think it gets talked about that much. Um, but there was a video, Wes's video that they did for uh, for Flight Plan with Jet. There was a Unadilla last year. Jet was having a bunch of crashes. It was just like a real off day for him. And in the video, Dazzy Lawrence goes, man, your eyes are just too quick today. Like your eye speed, I can tell your eye speed's too quick. He's like, today's just not your day. You're too fast for the track. And that comment stuck really in yeah. my head. I mean, first of all, imagine knowing your kid that well that you can make yeah. a comment like that sure. and just be so bang on. But then secondly, you know, that eye speed because... I mean, dude, I've always, I've always thought that, eh? Like even, um, like now in Dubai, there's this, I'm riding this massive, uh, sand track and it's like a, uh, six minute lap As opposed time. to the really hard clay <laughs> yeah, tracks well, that's, that are there. That's all I got. <laughs> now, there is one like kind of hard pack track, but I haven't fucked with it cause I'd have to put a different tire on. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, like I notice at high speeds, man, like just not, I can't really see shit. And I'm like, I wonder if that's the same for everyone. It just looks like one big blur and I'm just fucking holding the thing wide open. And after a while you just like kind of know where the track goes. I seen this Instagram post yesterday, day before I passed it around to my friend group. It was a story about Senna when he clips yeah. the wall and comes in and he's like, no, the fucking wall moved. And you're like, really, dude, come on. Yeah, like, yeah. You might not. A, you, you sure it wasn't you? And they go out and he goes with his, you know, crew chief or whatever. And they, they walk the course and they realize that one of the barriers had gotten tapped and it was literally moved out like five millimeters. And he knew. And he's like, oh, see, the wall did move. And you're like, yeah, that's, that's, I, I think that all of the top athletes, drivers, you know, I think that the, you get on this level um, of greatness and you have this, this focus and vision and this ability to see the sport, what yeah. you're doing, slow things down and to be so precise that, average people average rider like in our sport they don't you can try to explain that to them but they're like they don't know that yeah yeah you know yeah and you know people ask me all the time like with the top riders in the sport and let's just use like james stewart for instance because to me he's one of the most dynamic explosive riders that that i ever got to analyze and it's like well how does a guy do that and in my my opinion of it or analysis is that in his mind everything is going slow it's just normal yeah yeah that's all fine and surely there's got to be a little bit of your dna like a little bit of 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 how you're made that 
that, you, you know, um, makes that possible. Also, you know, you probably can push that limit to slow things down in your head, you know. Um, and, and you got to think with like Major League Baseball players, you know, I have friends, yeah. that are top players and all this. It's like, dude, how long is it from the point that a 100 mile an hour pitch leaves the pitcher's hand and it's yeah. at like 110 when it leaves the hand and the ball actually slows down to when it goes past you? But then you have to. I remember Troy Gloss, um, buddy of mine, World Series MVP for the Angels. He says, yeah, he goes, basically by the time the ball comes out of the pitcher's hand, you got to know what you're doing. Yeah. It's like, so how do you slow that down? And they, they're like, for them, you know, you take guys like Gary Sheffield, Mark McGuire, they were late swingers. So they would wait and then have this massively explosive fast twitch on the ball. So they had the ability to wait at that, you know, quarter of a second that gives them that extra advantage. You know, that's probably why I like, the certain type of steroids help those guys because yeah, for sure. their quickness and power, you know, would all attribute to that. But but for sure, their ability to just have everything be in slow motion, like in some movie, you know, The Matrix or something. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, it's uh, there, there's there's four muscles in your eye that are basically <laughs> compensating for every bit of movement. Um, like because so when we walk like we see things pretty level you know like our head's constantly mm-hmm. moving so you've basically got these these i think it's i'm pretty sure it's four muscles in each eye and uh and they do all of the compensation to basically like deliver you one one image you know so there i mean dude there's probably some crazy scientific shit that's in there that like the the recipe that has to happen for a James Stewart or a Ricky Carmichael or a Jet Lawrence, like whether it's, you know, those muscles are so developed and then mm-hmm. you're born into a family that likes motocross and then you sure. had an older brother that you're competitive with, like the recipe that makes people so high level and so elite, it's just, it's almost like as complicated as DNA in a sense, you know? And yeah. I think that's why, I think that's why you just generally have an appreciation for that level of talent too when it when yeah. it comes around well you know you take uh cyclists um you know certain cyclists the the best guys are genetically predisposed with advantages in a sense. Yeah, yeah yeah you know bigger hearts da 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 you know things like that and for sure you can push that limit but you know is it that you're you know you're built a certain way and it naturally comes easier to you. So, Hey, maybe I'll gravitate towards this because I did this really easy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I always use the example of like Stevie Ray Vaughan or, you know, Jimi Hendrix. I'm quite sure the first time they picked up a guitar, it made a lot more sense than the first time I picked up a guitar. Yeah. Like they just picked it up and like, Oh, this all just kind of makes sense. And so for certain, certain you know athletes like in our sport you get on the motorcycle and you're like oh this all just sort of makes sense to me and there's other riders that we can train and coach you know you know hours and hours and hours they can get their ten thousand hours in and still be a b-level rider yeah because it's just not you know so i i you know i think at, at age 52 i know that there are a lot of factors that come into play of why we do what we do and how we become good at good at what we do We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.